way to show allegiance to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They go out of their way to show allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُوا إِنَّكَ لَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ When the hypocrites come to you, whenever they come to you, they say, Oh, we bear witness. No doubt you are certainly the Messenger of Allah. Now the Muslim doesn't have to say that to the Messenger every time. Only when he converts. Right? When he accepts it, then he says it. Otherwise he knows he's the Messenger of Allah. But if you're trying to compensate for something you're feeling on the inside, like a child who says, I didn't do it by the way. And you say, what did you not do? <laughs> right? This is a guilty conscience that speaks. It's the guilty conscience that makes them say, we really believe you're the Messenger of Allah. And in that surah, to show their allegiance on the outside, they said, لَإِن رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَ لَيَخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ Right? They, they said when we return to Medina, because they were trying to show their allegiance. But when it came to desperate times in Surah Al-Ahzab, the wrong word came out of their mouth. <laughs> and their true allegiances were exposed. Another interesting comparison, Makkah and Bakkah. Have you heard these two names of Makkah before? They both occur once in the Qur'an. Once in the Qur'an, in Surah Muhammad, in Surah Muhammad, Allah Azza wa uses the word Makkah. Another time He uses the word Bakkah. Now historically speaking, they are both names of the same city, Makkah. Some have argued that Bakkah was the first name and Makkah is the later name. More accurately though, linguists have argued that Makkah is the name and Bakkah is the nickname. Makkah is the name and Bakkah is the nickname. It comes from Bakk, which is an Arabic verb. It means to be crowded. It means to have lots of crowd and you know, congestion of traffic. Okay, and is the ham in modern Arabic we use. Okay, now when Bakka is used in Surah Ali Imran with Abba, originating from the word crowd, the very few ayat that follow are ayat of Hajj. Walillahi ala nasi hijjul bayt. What comes with Hajj? Crowd. So what's the better word in that context? Bakka. But when there's no mention of Hajj in Surah Muhammad, you go back to normal and what word do you use? Mecca. SubhanAllah. Even this small detail, you and I would say Mecca, Mecca, same thing. Interchangeable. They're the same word. But the level of precision in the Qur'an's words is unparalleled. Human beings can't think at that level when they speak. They can't think at that level. We're not at that level of accuracy. So one thing we learn from Qur'an is how careful we need to be with our tongues. Right? This is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. He speaks in very, very, very precise, even to the minutest detail. Another interesting comparison, we go back to Surah Al-Ahzab. This you may have heard before. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِهِ In the fourth ayah, Allah says, Allah did not put two hearts inside of any man whatsoever. Huh. But now listen carefully. وَمَا جَعَلَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ You know what azwaj means? Spouses. Spouses. And Allah is speaking to men from the beginning of the ayah, so it means wives. Because the beginning of the ayah is talking to men, spouses here means wives. Wives are women. You know what ummahat means? Mothers. Women, right? The rest of the ayah is dealing with women. But the beginning of the ayah, Allah says, Allah did not put two hearts inside of any. Man, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِي رَجُلٍ The ayah has men and women both in it. So I would guess we could say Allah did not put two hearts inside of any human being. Because if you say human being, who does it include? Men and women, both. But if you say man, it only includes men. This is so because the Qur'an is literal, literally accurate and figuratively accurate. Of course when Allah says Allah didn't put two hearts inside of any man, He's not being literal. The idea is two intentions at the same time. Iman and kufr at the same time. Right? Iman and nifaq at the same time. Hypocrisy and faith can't coexist. One or the other. Faith or belief or disbelief, they can't coexist. One or the other. Certainty and doubt can't coexist. One or the other. So the figurative expression is Allah did not put two hearts inside of any man. But if you take it literally, is it true literally too? Right. But for women, they can get pregnant. And when they get pregnant, how many hearts can be inside them? SubhanAllah. <laughs> you could have argued literally, hey, hey, what about women? They might have two hearts at some point. 
But even that criticism from the liter liter you know, literal point of view isn't even possible. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِ Subhanallah. <laughs> okay. Another one. I'm, I didn't put Arabic on the screen on purpose because I don't want you to think that you can appreciate this subject only by Arabic. I really want to water this down uh, uh, to English, inshaAllah ta'ala, as much as possible. Allah speaks about tranquility often. The Arabic word for tranquility is as sakina as sakina Allah Azza wa Jal says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He is the one who sent tranquility into the hearts of the believers. He sent it into the hearts of the believers. But then several times in Surah Al-Fatih and Surah Al-Tawbah also, فَأَنزَلَ فَأَنزَلَ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَعَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ Actually, uh, فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَلَيْهِمْ He sent tranquility upon them. In one place he says in the same surah, he sent tranquility inside their hearts. In another he says he sent tranquility upon them. Now, tranquility inside your hearts, tranquility upon you, it's the same idea essentially but not close enough. This, is, this would be undermining the precision of the Qur'an. You see, the hearts, basically in the Qur'an, Allah speaks of two negative sentiments. There are many, but two central negative sentiments in the hearts. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون There's fear in the heart, and there's grief in the heart. Of the negative emotions that you have, negative emotions that you have, they stem from one of two things. Either they stem from fear, or they stem from grief. These are the two main negative. Anger can result from grief and, and go get worse, right? And fear leads to many other diseases like hypocrisy can be, can be a source, uh, or the source of it can be fear. So now these two feelings are in Arabic literature, in poetry even before Islam, the, the anger is described as something that rages inside your heart. And it's something that doesn't go away, it stays. Like if you're mad at your friend for saying something to you, you're not just mad at them at that time when they said it to you, you're mad at them every time you see their face. It's in your heart. It didn't just overcome you at that time, it got installed. So you have to uninstall. Which means you have to go where? Inside the heart. The beginning of Surah Al-Fatih. The Muslims have traveled all the way from Medina to go make Hajj. Did they get to make Hajj at Hudaybiyah? No. So what's in the hearts? Anger, frustration. We came all this way. If you study the seerah, you'll find a lot of frustration on the, even the tongues of the believers. Right? So where was the tranquility needed? Inside the hearts. Inside the hearts. But fear, and even in Arabic imagery, you find this in Shi'ir, Fear is something felt on the skin. Fear is something felt in your entire body, it shivers. Fear is something that overwhelms, it comes over your heart. Instead of in your heart, it is over your heart, and it doesn't linger. When it's inside your heart, it doesn't get out until you go in and get it out. But when it's over your heart, as soon as the scary situation is over, what happens? You're back to normal. Your kids are playing around, there's almost, all, all of a sudden there's thunder. Kids get scared. Thunder's over. You're back to playing again, right? That's how we are. You hear something scary or you're in a scary situation, as soon as that situation is over, you're back to normal. The fear doesn't come back necessarily. But with anger, you don't have to be, you don't, somebody doesn't have to upset you for you to be get angry again. It's the old anger that can come back for no other reason. You understand? So now since the anger or the fear overcomes you, what has to overcome you to counter it? Tranquility. So Allah, in the, in the situations wherever Sakina is mentioned with Allah, tranquility sent down upon. Like when the Messenger وسلم, was in the cave with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, and the, the investigators were looking for them, trying to find them and kill them. This was a situation of anger or fear. This was a situation of fear. So Allah sent tranquility upon them. Alayhim. When the kuffar at the end of Surah Al-Fatih, you know, they had gotten together, Hamiyyat al-Jahiliyyah, they got together in this gang mentality to gang up against the Muslims and go fight them. This was an intimidating situation because the Muslims were barely armed. Allah sent tranquility upon them. 
When Allah Azza wa Jal promised that they will enter the city of Mecca peacefully, لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَشْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ amineen. You will enter it peacefully. Because if you enter it peacefully, and by the way, لَا تَخَافُونَ You're not going to be afraid of anything. Denying the fear. And in that situation, He sent tranquility upon them. Upon them. So there's tranquility inside, and there's tranquility upon. If you just read it casually, you'll say, hey, it's the same thing. But if you appreciate the profound accuracy of words, down to the preposition from in to upon, that's just prepositions. Even that is incredibly accurate. This is one of my favorites. The next one. ذلك الكتاب How does the ayah go? لا ريب فيه Many people know that ayah, right? Now, what does ذلك mean? Anybody know? That. ذلك الكتاب That book. That book. Now, when I say this, as opposed to 